Hey everyone, this is Ryan. In this video, we'll take a look at how to implement a menu at the bottom of your phone app that's very simple and easy to use with using four components. And you'll see that you'll be able to navigate to each menu item. It will highlight it. Menu items that are not selected will be grayed out. And you will be able to see you know, what's selected at the top here and how to you know, hide, display your controls. Okay, so to begin, what I've done is I've added a rectangle to the bottom of my screen here. And it's just a gray background. Um, you could just pick and choose it from your, um, your color palette here. And what I did is I put it about, um, you know, 100 in height. So you don't want it too tall. It really, it's something that you'll have to play around with just to get the right setting. But 100 height seems to be ideal here. And it should span the width of your app. Above, I have a um, just a header just to let us know what menu item is selected while we test this out, just so I can show you how it works. So if we want to start adding the icons, we can do that. Um, so what I've done is if you go to the media um, selection here on the left, I've already added my icons for the buttons below. So we'll have four separate buttons and we'll have a default um, icon here. So this is one that's not selected. And then we'll have one that's colored and this one is blue when it is selected. And of course only one item can be selected at a time. So since images you can't change the color on a whim like you can with icons, this is where you will um, need to have two icons for you know one option uh, selection here at the bottom. Um, if you're using an icon, if you're happy with out of the box what's available, then you could just, you know, use the conditions to display the appropriate color when an option is selected. So let's go and just drag and drop some of these items here. So if you upload any of your items, um, I recommend PNG. And you can also just drag and drop right from the multimedia section on the left. So once you drop it in, um, I would recommend, you know, 60 by 60 is probably the appropriate height and width. And we'll just drag it down a little bit and just, you know, push it down to a better location. And then once I drop that in, we will want to drag over the selected item. And that should be layered on top. And we'll say 60, 60. And then we'll just drag it right over top and you'll see how they're right on top of each other. Uh, it'll just match nicely with the auto alignment that uh, Power Apps has. And then what we will do is add a label here down below. So we're just going to say it's home. And what we will do is change around the text size to about 15 semi bold height obviously 70 is way too big so we'll try for about 25 and a width probably about 100 or so width will always depend on you know how long your text is below so we will adjust that as needed and of course you have this nice auto alignment here and you'll see how home fits nicely underneath it so what I'll do is just add the remainder of the buttons so that it will, um, you know, you don't have to wait for me to, to finish all those out. Okay, so what I've done is I've added the remaining components for contacts, tasks, and expenses. And that's the, the three components. So you have the, the two images, the default where it's not selected, and the blue where it is selected, and the color underneath. So one thing that you will see here is if we go to any of these items, we want to make sure when the user clicks it, it's in anywhere of this area. So to do that so that they don't accidentally tap and nothing happens because they you know, selected somewhere to the right or the left or below, what we can do is add a button that's transparent and is, is going to be the overlay for the button. Um, so what we can do there is we will go and add and we'll add a new button here and we will bring this over 
overlay it and we'll re remove the text here. So this is going to be, you know, button home. And to change this around, all we have to do is change around the fill for the, um, the standard fill, the hover fill, and also the pressed fill so that nothing appears to happen when the user clicks it. But we will change the back end, the, the colors, and show the appropriate images at that point. So to do that, you can go add the transparency right here. Okay, you'll see how it's empty and there's nothing there. And that allows us to actually change around the height and width to what it should appear. Okay, so we, we give the user this, you know, area of space to select the home. So if we go back to the button and you will see how it's RB, our RGBA 000, that's transparent. What we will have to do is change around the hover fill to that as well, and also the pressed fill. So let's do that. And so if we press play here and we hover and we press, we see nothing happens with that button, but we know it's actually triggering, okay? Because we haven't disabled it or anything like that. So what we can do is copy this button, okay? So we could just highlight it, copy it, paste, and we'll just bring it over here for contacts, okay? And again, sizing is really up to you. And we'll paste it for tasks. We'll try to get it all aligned together. And we'll also paste it over for expenses. Okay, so of course, you know, we have to make sure everything is renamed properly. That's best practice so you don't get lost. And it's easy for you to follow along while I explain everything here. So once that is done, we can go on the buttons and what we want to do is actually update a variable. So to do that, you click on the button down here, go to the properties window, and you go to the on select property. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to set and we're going to selected menu and we're going to say it's home, okay? And what we will do is copy this We'll go to each button here. We'll go to the on select and we'll say that this one is contacts. This one is tasks. And the last one is expenses. Okay, so every time we select any of these buttons, this variable will update. So what we could do here is if we go to the images that we have below. So if I just type here, so here's all our images that we have. So what we could do here is because we layered everything together, you really only have to care about the top layer. So the home selected. And what we can say here is if we go to the visible property, we could say where, um, you know, selected menu equals home, okay? And you'll see how it actually disappeared because we haven't pressed it yet to select that variable. So if we go to the selected of this item here, we can go to visible property and we could say where it equals contacts. And for the selected for tasks, we can go to the visible property, paste this in, and we'll say tasks. And for the last one, for expenses, we'll go to the visible property and we will switch it for expenses. So what we can do once that's done is you will see that I actually have an icon below here and we're going to say selected menu so we can actually see what the variable changes to. We'll press play and see how it works. So I selected home, we see home. Tasks, we see tasks there. Expenses, contacts, and so on. So the menu's working the way we want. However, 
you know, it, it would actually be nice if the labels beneath match the color scheme that we have above. It's more apparent to the user. So let's do that. So in this case, what we will do is we will go to our labels here and we'll go to expenses and let's go to the color property here. And what we can do is we will say, if we'll paste that in, selected menu equals expenses, it will be, let's say, this is going to be your default. You'll have to find out the color codes for yourself of what you want to use. One. And for this one, I'm just, actually, I'm just going to type in color.blue, something like that. Okay, for selected. And we'll close it up. Okay. So if we happen to go to expenses now, you'll see how it somewhat matches. Okay, the colors are not exact, but they're almost there. So we could probably change that around to like a dark blue or something like that. Um, again, you just need to figure out what co color codes you want to use and they will look better. So like this. So what we could do here is we can go to the remaining labels. So the best thing you could do is just search for your labels. We'll go to the home, go to color, We'll just paste what we had in previously. And we just have to switch that to dark blue. And we'll say home. And we'll do the same thing for contacts and also for tasks. So let's do that quickly. And we'll do that for tasks. And then we're done with that. And then we have one last item to touch on, which is the on start, defaulting to a certain button. So here you'll see how it all works. Okay, so that's all great. Our label's working how we want it to. And the one thing I want to mention is to display the appropriate fields that you want on the form. What you can do is use the exact same property I had previously with the image selected. If you have a container or a group of controls, you just say where selected menu equals so-and-so, those controls will only appear then. So it's easy to swap out controls. So you're only showing you know, your expenses uh, part of the screen when needed. So it's very simple to do it that way. Now, as I mentioned before, you will probably want to default to a certain button when you load your app. So to do that, uh, we want it set to home screen. So if I go to my on start property, you can just paste it in there. Actually, it's, it's pretty simple. So once you go run unstart, you will see it defaulted to home. So the user will always be on their home screen and all your controls above will appear at the same time. So there's no, you know, fancy logic that you have to put in place there. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how you can implement a simple navigation menu at the bottom of your phone apps for your users that are, you know, it's self-explanatory, easy to use from a usability um, perspective, and it's a very clean and simple design.